when I see myself through the eyes of my family, it hurts. I was a guy playing in the NFL, doing gigantic bench presses, mm -hmm. being able to get in a lot of fights. It's about controlling people. You're told as a kid, dominate, control. I was guilty in many, many ways. I felt like I own my wife and my kids. The hardest part was knowing that someone I loved, respected, and trusted was nothing like I thought he was. Everything was a lie. I treated her like she wasn't human. Is this a bad dream? Does this really happen? Adam called me on the way home from the event that same night because it was that traumatic. The way he looked at me, it was like no one's ever gonna believe me. If I would have just retaliated in defense, I would be under the jail right now. My earliest memory is watching my father. The example of manliness that I have to look up to is towering over all of us. And I'm ball up my little fist. I can't do anything. But when I would go ask older teens about what do you do to meet a girl, it was like, hey man, you gotta have game. You have to lie to him, talk smooth to him. But I was like, oh, how about be yourself? Like, no, no, don't do that. I was a guy playing in the NFL, doing gigantic bench presses, mm -hmm. being able to get in a lot of fights. I grew up in that world. I believe just because I was a man that I was more valuable than the women in my life. We started having a family. She put everything on hold for 20 years. I was never told any different. There were guys that were like, hey man, control your wife. And you feel the pressure. The desire of every person is to have intimacy, but the problem is you tied into that hyper-masculinity image, which does not allow you to show people who you really are. We were disconnected. Adam called me at my house. He said, Terry, I got this role in this movie I'm doing. It's called The Longest Yard. My father was a real man too. I had an amazing mom, I had an amazing dad. All they ever did was make me feel like I'm good at things. My wife, who I love very much, I, I, if I wasn't pursuing this career, I wouldn't have met her, I wouldn't have had these great kids. I couldn't believe the way I spoke to her. My oldest daughter is 27 years old. I treated her like she wasn't human. There were many times I intimidated my wife through my size. I never crossed that line. But the whole thing, is, it starts like that. He admitted to me that he had been unfaithful and that in the course of the marriage, there were things he had done that crossed the line. But she said, don't come home. And I was like, that's not how I'm supposed to go. I just lost my family. I lost my family. And most men, they just get a divorce, find a new woman, do it all over again. And they never change. I said, wait a minute, maybe it's me. Maybe I do have a problem. That realization sunk in, and it was the beginning of a whole new thing for me. Are you a cool dad? Uh, no, I love him. I love him more than anything on the planet, but no, I stink. You have a fork in the road. You either soften and you empathize, or you go the other way, or you go hard. When I see myself through the eyes of my family, it hurts. But manhood, true manhood, is beautiful. It's admitting that you need help. After my wife forgave me, she showed me what true love is. Because she loved me anyway. I had true intimacy for the first time. My wife and I were at an event with Adam Sandler. I was standing there with him, and this gentleman comes across the room. And then suddenly my husband backs into me, and he pushes this man. And he's basically staring at me, and I'm looking like, is this a joke? And then he comes back again and grabs me again. I slap his hand away, push him back more forcefully. And I'm like, what are you doing? The way he looked at me, it was like, no one's ever going to believe you. I immediately held back as a black man in America. <sighs> Say it as it is. I think it's important. You only have a few shots at success, a few chances 
to make yourself a viable member of the community. I have seen many young black men who were provoked into violence and they were in prison or they were killed. My wife told me three years earlier, Terry, you can never handle any situation like this with violence. You are a target. And I grabbed her hand and I left that part and she just kept saying, I'm proud of you. Adam called me on the way home from the event to that apologize. Same night. That same night, because it was that traumatic. He was like, oh man, I'm sorry. I understand something really bad went down. I have men coming at me like, man, Terry Crews' career wasn't even all that for him to let that white man feel on him. I said, yeah, but my family's all that. My wife is all that. The question is not whether I could have knocked the guy out. I would have got arrested. I would have lost everything I had. Women get this all the time. Mm -hmm. Women get like, oh, you don't know what you're talking about. You just crazy. It's blame the victim. What kind of man would I be to tell my kids, if someone touches you, tell someone, and then I don't do it? I was right there beside him. I was like, Wonder Woman and Superman, bring it on. It freed me. I knew instantly that I had to tell my story so that other people could be free. Talking about it is how you defeat it. When you're talking about this mindset of masculinity, it's about controlling people. You cannot love someone and control them at the same time. I tell men, you gotta hold other men accountable. We gotta change, y'all. It's gotta be a wake up that's for real. All my strength, every ounce of my physical strength is for building and protecting my wife and family, never for hurting. Strength is not about picking things up and throwing people around. Strength comes from forgiveness. Strength comes from standing up for the weak. Standing up for people who can't stand up for themselves.